You know, <laughs> this reminds me uh, when the owner came in and says, you know, we haven't put him with any other dogs. Uh, what he's been trying to do is to create a good dog. That's what training is all about. I want to create a good dog. And we have been told that we can do that by making them sit, stay, come, heal, you know, the traditional training techniques. And I'm saying that's not the way. Now, why do I say that's not the way? Why is it that I take something that people have been doing since the beginning of time, which is training, and then tell people that we don't need it? That's pretty cocky. That's pretty egoic, one would say, to say, look, we don't need training. But I know that training is trying to create a wonderful dog. But there's a difference between training and creating. Uh, and creating and discovering. When you're training, you're trying to create. When you're discovering, it's a whole new thing. The only interesting thing about it is that when you try to train, look at this guy. Look at his personality is so powerful. So powerful. Look at him. Just constantly messing with dogs, telling them. That's his personality. That's his personality. Look at him. Look at him. Look, trying to get him to go. <laughs> Can you believe it? Watch look at this guy. Look at the noise, the energy here. Look at this. This is what people are afraid of when you bring a bunch of dogs together. When you're trying to create a wonderful dog or anything, on the journey of creating, you can discover something. And once you discover something, it's a whole new ball game. Things just change. You begin to see things differently. And what I have discovered has led me into saying and doing the things that I do. It's most important that we submerge ourselves into what we're doing because the doing leads you into something that is unimaginable. If you submerge yourself into it, then once you have done that, the discovery of something much more beautiful takes place. And now you're addicted to that. I am addicted to what you're looking at here in that it's so addicting that I know what it means. It's like looking at the matrix. You see how important it is for dogs to be able to express themselves this way. Why? Because they are compulsive creature. A compulsive creature is going to do this. Now you notice how he nose butted her? Now I haven't disciplined this guy yet. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to discipline him yet. I haven't really wanted to yet. I want it to organically come out so that when he's fully out, if you've watched his videos, you see that he comes out a little more and a little more and a little more deep, but not all the way. I want him all the way out and then I'm going to settle him on a hormone that's most important. Now, also, I have not physically interacted with him. That's another reason in terms of touching him, rubbing him. That's something that I haven't done yet because I'm just evaluating him on this level. But as you can see, his personality, he needs it. If you watch his videos, you're going to say, this guy here, you know, he's something else. He's a dick. He's a dick. But why am I doing it like this? Why am I doing it like this? It's because I've discovered things that I know how to use it front, back, and three sides flat. How to get into a dog's mind in many ways.
Sometimes, you know, we have one way of doing things and we get stuck on that one way. No, these are multi-layered dogs, just like human beings. There are many ways to get to where we want to be. And this is my job here. This is what discovery will do. So in taking this guy, which is a, is a great example, he's a great example, look at this, guy. because he's everything that people are afraid of when they release a dog with other dogs. He's testing everybody, the big guy. Look at this, look at, look at this. He's tempting the bull. You see the hair up on his back, his tail goes down once he's challenged. So I already know that I'm going to be able to dominate him. But he's pushing to find out where he fits in. That's why it's important that other dogs do it. I'm here as a mediator to watch this happen. This is the discovery that I have found many, many years ago. You see? Look at, look at this guy. This is fascinating to me. Everything that I have learned is happening right now. You see this? Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. He's learned to get to the back of the legs. Look at that. He's going to piss her off. You see that? Pissed her off. And she disciplined him. But <clears throat> if my um, Fouché Way family is watching this, what do you think about this stuff? Who do you think he is? And how are you working with a dog like this? You know? Do you train him? Do you make him sit some more? Do you make him down some more? Do you make him go to his place? What do you do with this dog? Ah, my gosh. This is a great dog to work with. This is a great dog to work with because he's doing his own thing. He's actually doing what I'm doing. He's creating a problem that he thinks he has the answers to. <laughs> the first thing you need to know about him, even to begin to work with him, is that he is a mentally dominant dog. Not yet sure himself. He's not yet sure if he's a physically dominant dog. But he's going there. You see how he's starting to interact with them when they turn around and push back his tail goes down he is mentally dominant but he doesn't know yet that he's physically dominant i know he's physically dominant he doesn't know that yet that's why he's holding back you see him tempting the bull messing with wiley which is the wrong one to mess with now when you get a dog like this at home human being. You see the tail wagging and our dogs are barking at us. They get in our face and bark at us and then we go and get him a treat or we go and let him out <clears throat> or we go and get his favorite toy or we pet him and we think, oh, he's so cute. He's communicating with me. He's telling me what he wants. He's so smart. No, this guy's climbing and he's going to become uncontrollable. Because he's mentally dominant, he will not let it go. He will not let it go. You see? So before he figures out that he can be physically dominant, he's got to be dealt with. How do we do that? How are we going to prevent him from finding out that he's physically dominant? First of all, we're not going to play games with him. We're not going to do things that causes him to challenge us physically and call it play. What we're going to do to him is hormonally manipulate him to press on those hormones and make him feel subordinate in situations that he would previously feel dominant and never let him forget it. We're going to put pressure on him and pressure on him and pressure on him until he figures out that it's not in his best interest to be this way. See him even checking me out, smelling me, coming over and smelling me. Look at the position of his tail as he's smelling me. He's not even sure that uh, he shouldn't challenge me. You see? In fact, when he first came, I remember the, uh, the person that brought him in says, he's not too sure about men. Now, when I hear that about a dog, what I'm hearing is that he's on the verge of challenging men. 
but it just hasn't happened yet. And he doesn't challenge the females. He may not, but I'm assuming that he doesn't challenge them because he assumes that they're weak. Why? Because we just give them love and affection. Love and affection. And this is how we can take a dog that has an edge to him that could end up being a beautiful and wonderful dog and turn him into something that will get him the needle that will cause him to be destroyed. Look at his ears when the dog passes him and smells him. So here is a kid, it's like a kid that's going wrong and then we don't realize that he's going wrong and we don't pull him back. Some of my friends that I grew up with were like this. And it took them getting in trouble and having an alternative of going to jail or going to the service. And when they went to the service and they got in that boot camp and the discipline and the domination began to take place the way they do it in the Army, Navy, and Marines, it wasn't until then that they got it together. He's one of my friends. There was a guy named Robert that I'm thinking of. This is Robert. This guy looks like a Robert, doesn't he? <laughs> looks just like a Robert. But Robert, he had to have that pressure placed on him. You see, look at that. That's Robert. And when this happened, Robert began to change. When he came back, he was someone that was knowledgeable. Why? Because he discovered something when he was there about himself. He was always trying to do something. You know, that was Robert. Look at this guy. Look at him. But it wasn't until he got with someone and got in that service and they checked him. And when they checked him and checked him and checked him and checked him over and over and over and over for the length of time that he was in that boot camp, it wasn't until then. See, men are going to understand this. Women, maybe not. Because we're still dealing with in the emotional aspect of things. Look at this guy. All the males and the females. So why wouldn't he want to challenge me? Why wouldn't he smell me like he's smelling them? Of course he is. Because he has no one to put him in his place. He's right on the verge of when you test him to become physically dumb. Uh, this is the kind of dog I love. You see? This is the one. So let me show you how pressure is placed on this guy. I'm going to use my body language to intimidate him. This is about intimidation. When you have a dog that is mentally dominant, not yet secure about whether he's physically dominant, then we're going to test him. See my energy. Look at the tail. This is body language. Everybody sees this. I'm gonna jump on top. Every time we see him going above and beyond what he should be doing when he's playing, it's okay if he's playing, but if he's going above and beyond tempting dogs that are not engaging with him, then this is what we have to do. Now I want to see, have I ma manipulated him enough to feel like he needs to go into his run? Yes, I have. And that's all it takes, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. So when people say, what is his method? What's his angle? How does he discipline and dominate? I do it hormonally. I get into the dog's head. That's a mild version like you wouldn't believe. And I do it, and I do it, and I do it. And when I think it's done, I do it some more. And when that happens, just like we did with this girl here, they begin to connect on to you, and they see you as attractive, they see you as a leader, and you're able to work with multiple dogs. All dogs that have come here that were aggressive for other dogs or for other people, we find that they say, okay, you 
I believe you, I follow, you don't lie to me. You're not trying to tell me to sit, stay, come and heal because I'm doing this. I go directly to what you're doing and it doesn't matter whether you sit, stay, heal or place. That's irrelevant. That's what I mean by lying. I don't lie to my dogs. I am a good observer of them. And in observing them, I am able to manipulate them. This is a new way of working with dogs. And really, it's not new at all. It's been around since the beginning of time. The first person that worked with a wolf to assist them in living that brought them, that dog, out of that wolf, were practicing the psychology of dogs. To help a dog or a wolf, to help us to survive, to live, to hunt, to survive. I don't think if it had not been for those people who were thinking on the level that I'm talking about now, that so long ago we have forgotten it. Now I understand how history is, how we can lose history, because... <clears throat> It's so long ago that no one is retaining it. We're just moving on with today, tomorrow, the next day, and not thinking that the past has a bearing on what's happening here. And it really, really does. So I'm dealing with something that has been done since the beginning of time, way beyond us ever thinking about training. And we can't call that training that's bonding and, and living and studying and observing the wolves so we see how they are and what they do. And because of that, we take that, we manipulate that, we hormonally manipulate them to work for us, and they love to do it. I see no difference than in a relationship. When a relationship with our dogs and we make them feel a certain way or a relationship with a person and we make them feel a certain way, we get more done than we could possibly get done if we were telling them what to do because we make them feel that it's necessary to do it. That's my method. It's a powerful method. If you can do it, if you can accept it, if we can be present with it, there's nothing that we can't do. I feel that there's nothing that I can't do with dogs. And I say that, that there's nothing that I can't do with dogs because I'm talking about feelings. I'm talking about nature. I'm talking about truth. And truth, you can stand on. It's a firm ground, man. It's a beautiful thing. See, I've become more attractive to this guy simply because of what I've done. He connects on to me more simply because of what I've done. You see? He wants me to interact with him simply because of what I have done. He's not upset with me or mad with me. It makes him feel more subordinate. Well, that's the key here. 